Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to implement the transaction history. In the last episode, we already set the test up to be able to get the transactions and now we just incorporate it into our front end. I'm going to start by identifying which account is the default and being able to set which is default. So the assumption is by default, the number one account that is chosen will be the default. Or better still, we're going to have a way to be able to set that in the future such that you'll be able to set your default account and it's going to be updated on the back end. But for now, we're going to do it on the front end. So let's get back into our code. I'll put that in place. So if we come back to our account lists, yeah, accounts, I believe. So here we can also define what the default is. But again, like I said, defaults would also come from the back end in the future. So here I can have cost default account. And the default account in this case, I'm going to consider just the index. Okay. Or uh, maybe the old account can be considered anyway, so that we, we can control multiple things. But rather, since our account structure and um, arrangement will not be changing again, like it used to, we can actually use an index to represent this. So I will use the index zero as the default account, which means that should equate to the NGN account. And coming back to the index side, um, this is where we control um, what we see. So you can see from here, the account is here and the transaction is here. So we need a way to be able to tell the transaction what the default account is. So we are setting the default index here. We can probably set the default account on the side. So here we can have const default account that sets default account. So this time around, we are going to add use states into account type or null, then null. So this makes sense here. So whenever we make a change, we can just tell the default account what it is. Then we can send that default account to the transaction section. So if we come down to the transaction section, so here is the dummy data we have so far. And now we can try to get the information for the default account. So here I'm going to have props. We use it cross to or other type props is equals to default account and this is expecting an account type whether we like it or not so account type and not null so we are expecting a value so here we can have default account i just call it account default account seems to be a mouthful so account then we have the props so that's okay. However, we're going to have some issue with this because it's expecting an account before we can actually use this components. So what I'll do is I'm going to have default account and, and this, which makes no sense. However, we need to be able to update our default account. So that means we have to come down to account itself, define the props for it. So type props. And here I'm going to have set default account. Yeah, we are going to have a conflict here. So instead, I'm going to say update default accounts. And again, this is going to be a required uh, parameter. So we have to provide it. So in here, I'm going to have props, then update default account. So now whenever we change our default accounts here, we can listen to that change and based on that, update our default account. So here we can have uh, use effects. So we want to listen to when we have accounts. So yeah, that's what we want to deal with. So then if accounts dot length is greater than zero, then update default account into default uh, default stage. So we can now use this. So we are listening to accounts and default accounts. So whenever there's any changes, then we update the accounts. So that's our update for this. We've not implemented this yet, but we will. So coming back to the index, we can have updates default accounts. Then we can just send in our set default account to it. Then this should be okay. So now we have our structure in place. So what we have to do next is to make it visual. So we need to know that this is actually the default account. So yeah, to do that, we can come down to the get content. So on the account card, we can also pass the default information to it. So if we come down to account cards, we have the account type. So we can extend this. So let's extend this type props equals to and so all we need to define here is just uh, if it's default. So we can say is default. That's the first thing. Then we also want to undo and unclick. 
So clicking on an account kind of sets it as default. So on click. So on click, we can assume the on click is just um, saying nothing. We are going to undo it from the other side. But we have this information now. So with this, we can specify that uh, this is default and define the styling for that. So to set this up, we are going to make this relative. That way we can position our default uh, flag somewhere we can control. And here we can say if props dot default, so it gives us the idea already. If prop dot is default, so why is it making an issue? Okay, so this has changed from just account type to props. Yep, that's better. So let's work with this and um, see what it looks like. Then if we come back to the account itself, we can then send the default. So it's default. And that's is equivalent to default account. Then on click. So we know what it's bringing. Then we can set default accounts to the active index. And save. So let's take a look at the browser and see what it looks like. So defaults makes sense. And if we click on this, we didn't get anything, even though we expect. So inspect. Yeah, we've not implemented or rather integrated our on click. So that's why that is not working. So the cat takes in the on click. So props dot on click. So that would work. And also to make the card actually react to our over, we can have the cursor to be pointer first, transition all, then transition. So transition duration is 500 milliseconds. Over scale 105 should do. Okay, let's check it out again. I think that's better. If we click on it, the default changes. And whenever that default change is going to affect the transaction history that is shown. So yeah, this is looking all right. So we are done with the account card. We've been able to update the default. And whenever we change this default information, because it's going to affect the default account here, it's going to update the account and automatically it's going to affect the transactions. So what we want to do is we want to have a use effect to get transactions that is going to affect the account selected. So here we are going to have a loading. So const loading sets loading because to this. So by default, the state is true. If account change, then we want to set loading to true again because I don't want to set the loading on the function we are going to define itself. So I'd to have set loading equals to true. Then we can make a call to the function to get the transactions. So const get transactions. This is going to be an async function. And here we can call get transactions. So we need to define the endpoint to get transactions. So it's within the account. So here we can have transactions. So let's take a look at what we did in the last episode. In our back end, come back to the account. So this is get transactions. This is a get request. And based on this, we are also defining a payload. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So the only fix we want to have here is to turn this to a post request. So that way we can easily send our payload without any issue. So that's all we need to do in regards to that. Now we can come back here. So transaction is going to be base URL plus account plus transaction. And we are good on that. So now we can also get access to the use Azios. So const equals to use Azios. And here we can have the Azios handler. Then also we need the transactions. Um, the structure for the transaction, we detected that in the last episode, but I can't remember again. So let's try to get the transactions first. Then we define the, the payload. So here I'm going to have res is used and now we've not defined what the structure will be. So I'll remember this. Yep. So another thing we could do if we wanted to use the get requests would be to use this form where we use um a param, a URL param. But yeah, maybe in the future we can do that, which makes sense because we are trying to get transactions. But for now, since we are trying to send a payload, a body payload, then we would use the regular one. So this is going to be, let's go to the network. So account URL dot transactions. Okay, then this is going to be a post. Then this is going to be a account underscore ID 
the trust account.id. Then this is going to be an authenticated request, so we agreed on that. So for now, we only want to console.log the requests. Okay, so that's all we need to do here. Let's take a look at what we have. So inspect console. So we have our theory. So we have the account ID, the amount, created ads, the ID, and so on. So those are the information we have. And if we clear this, I will switch to this. Then we get another information, which is what we want. So based on this, we have access to the amount, the created ads, and the ID. So those are the information we have for now. So let's define our payload structure on that note. So we come back to this, come back to the types. So here we can have S port interface or type. So transaction type. So we have the amount, which is number, the created ads, which is a string. And maybe the ID, which is also this. So we don't need the account ID because that's what we have as default. So now we can prompt here, come back to the transactions. So make this transaction type. So an array of it. Okay. Now we can have trans transactions. Or rather use a state. Yep. So that's what we want. So here we can now have set transactions as our states. So now the issue here is that the structure we want is a bit different. So maybe this can be created at or something like that. Or better still, we can use the type. So the type can either be a credit or a debit. So DR or a CR. Then here we can have the amount. Then here we can have the created at. So I think we can ignore the payments method now because we don't have any for that. So this is new invoice. We can actually get one. So here's what we were defining for the new invoice before. So as you can see, we are expected to convert this into an array of this, one like a matrix. So let's see how we can achieve that. Uh, first thing first, let's console log what this looks like. So here we can have um, const get transaction list. So for now, we can return new invoice. Why we also log the new invoice to be able to study what is inside it. And finally, we can send this to get transaction lists. Okay, so let's take a look at our new invoice and see what is in it. So we can see, so it's an array. So it's expecting an array of this information. It should look good. I think we can achieve this. So coming back here, we're going to have our results. So we can have post results, which is across to an array. Then we can have for transaction in this. So we're expecting type and uh, amount, then created ad. So the type would be DR, so we can define type. So cost type equals to, yeah. So debit or credits, and based on that, we have type. Then also, whenever we are trying to load, then we should have loading state. So let's return the result first. Then we can do away with all this. So we can remove all uh, this, we don't need this again. Then our data data can be removed. Cool. So finally, so it looks like it's complaining. Yep. So let's convert everything to strange dots. To strange. Now everything is okay. So we're good on that notes. So finally here we can have loading and we can have the load, load spinner. Then the class name for this is tests dash range dash 500. Else we have this. Okay, so I believe we've implemented what we need to do. We might need to format our date and time, but we get the idea. So debits, credits, you probably want to use a color coding to represent this, or like a bash, just like we have for this. So we can actually do that. Then we format our both money as well as the created at our updated at. So let's quickly do that. Let's add some aesthetics. So we've implemented this on our account card. So let's do the same thing. So we can copy all this. And I think we have a badge anyway. So let's see if we can make use of that. So we have um, a badge and this is going to be cred CR. Let's just make it CR. 
And here we can have class name of uh, BG bring. Then maybe 500. Then this is going to be DR for debit. So we have um, DR as for matchness. And this will be BG red. Yep. Then also we want to format the amount. So we are going to have format currency. Yep. Debit. Debited at. Let's see if we have format date. We don't. Yeah, we'll leave this for now until we have the format dates. Yep, so it's complaining that the badge is not this. So let's say our transaction table. Yep, so we define this to be a string. However, it can be any. So let's have it as any. So as to avoid that. Cool. So now we don't have any issue again. Let's take a look at our results. All right, so we have things formatted. All we have to do next is to format our things, which should make it look good. And if we click on USD, it's fast enough that we don't see the loading, but obviously it did load it. So yeah, we've implemented our transaction history, and I can ultimately say now that we are done with the transaction parts. And also the first benchmark can now officially come to an end. So the next one I'm going to be visiting is looking at how we can generate a card such that we can pay into our accounts. So seeing that, and again, if you've not subscribed, I would recommend you do that to appreciate us. Thanks and bye for now.